Hey, it's Devora, and I realized today, actually, that I have never told you the story of how I overcame anxiety, depression, and PTSD with holistic methods when I was a teen. So I figured I would share it. I would love to hear your takeaways at the end. Um, but those of you who know me well might know that when I was a teen, I had really severe anxiety and depression. Um, it was so severe that I was hospitalized for it twice when I was in the 10th grade. Um, and then unfortunately, I experienced a sexual assault and I got to add PTSD to my list of diagnoses. So it was a very, very rough couple of years. Um, if you knew me back then and you had no idea, surprise. <laughs> you know, there's a lot of flavors of depression. Um, and I was that type who, you know, on the outside, you know, was really type A, top of the class, got the grades, got the scores, got the accolades, but inside was a total mess. Um, yeah, so it was rough. It was a really rough time. And I was blessed though, really blessed that I had really supportive parents and resources. So my parents were great and they found me an amazing therapist. Um, I had a great social worker at school good psychiatrist, you know? Like, I have nothing but gratitude for those people, and they helped me. They absolutely helped stabilize me. But I found that, you know, as I was kind of going through my teen years, I felt pretty numb. Like, I wasn't miserable, but I wasn't really happy, happy either. I wasn't thriving, and I knew what it had been like to be happy, and I knew I was kind of like, I felt kind of like a shell of my former self, almost. like. I just didn't really still feel like me. You know, I felt really numb much of the time. And I remember how helpless I felt in that feeling because it's like I had done all the right things, right? Like I had checked all the boxes of the things you do when you have depression and anxiety and PTSD and I'd gotten that help. And, you know, I had the meds and I had the therapy and it was like, now what? You know, like, Am I going to spend the whole my whole life feeling like this? And it was kind of, you know, like, what's next? You know, like, when's that day that I magically wake up and I'm all better, you know? Um, so it's kind of a dark time. And I was really blessed to have a really strange friend. And I hope all of you have at least one very strange friend because they just introduce you to all sorts of random, totally weird stuff. So my friend was like totally random and weird and his parents were like professors at this really activist campus nearby and they were active in this like um anarchist bookstore and grew pot in their backyard like that kind of weird right and i was like from this like very mainstream and medically mainstream and just like very normal family and um he was like let's i heard about this thing it's called tapping and I think you should go with me because like it's supposed to help with stress. And this was like 20 years ago, okay? EFG tapping was not a thing. It was so fringe. And I was like, tapping? Like, is that tap dancing? Like, what is that? You know? And he was like, no, it's like that based on Chinese acupuncture and you like tap certain points on your face and your body and you feel better. And I was like, no, like what? Right? Again, I grew up like completely medically mainstream and I was top in my class and I was a smart person and I just didn't do stuff like that, you know? And he was like, no, let's just try it. And the thing is, I was kind of crushing on this guy a little bit at the time. So finally I was like, okay, you know, if he wants to go, we'll go. And we show up. And I'll never forget this because we walk in and we're the only teenagers in the room, okay? The room is full, full of middle-aged women in colorful scarves and Birkenstocks. Like, that that's who was there, okay? And, I mean, I was a little fringe, like, in the way, like, I had blue hair sometimes and, like, I quoted Beat Generation poetry. Like, I was a little out of the box, but I wasn't, like hanging out with middle-aged women in Birkenstocks and colorful scarves kind of out of the box. And we walk in and I'm already feeling really awkward and uncomfortable. And then within two minutes, one of the women there 
is so friendly. Everyone is so nice and comes over to me and introduces herself and says, hey, um, <clears throat> she introduces herself and she tells us that she is a shaman. And that, folks, was enough for me. I was like, I am out of here. As I say this now, I think it's hilarious because 20 years later, one of my close friends is a twice initiated shaman and I think it's amazing and I learned so much from her. But 20 years ago, like 17 year old Devorah was not having it. And I remember turning around and being like, I'm done. And my friend was like, come on, we're already here, you know? So we go to the seminar, <clears throat> which I finally agreed to go to. We walk in and it's given by Gary Craig, the founder of EFT Tapping. <clears throat> I have to cough, hold on. <clears throat> so, <clears throat> getting over this cold. So anyway, so Gary Craig, right? Which now is like a total honor that we were able to work with him because, you know, at this point, EMT is mainstream. It's totally out in space. It's been proven to treat anxiety, depression, PTSD, all sorts of other things, approved by the VA to treat, you know, PTSD in the veterans, etc. Back then, like, this was a totally fringe, weird thing. And we're sitting around with a bunch of middle-aged people, you know, who are shamans. Okay, so we're like listening to Gary like explain the points and you, there's different points you, points you tap and you're saying certain things. And I'm just like, oh my God, you know? And I came with something, he said, bring something you wanna work on, something you want more relief around. And at that point I had just broken up with um, a boyfriend and it had been a really tough breakup and I was full of anger towards myself, anger towards him, just the whole thing it was a mess and you know, I tapped on it with everyone in the workshop, you know, we were tapping and it was really crazy because I had, you know, you rate the intensity of the issue at the beginning and it was a 10 level intensity for me. Like it was super stressful. And then we did a few rounds of tapping and all of a sudden I tuned in and I really put myself in the place of, you know, that breakup and feeling what I had felt earlier about what should have happened and how could I put up with it first of all, all the feelings I had had, you know, self-blame and blaming him and whatever. All of a sudden, like it went from a 10 level stress to like maybe a two. And then we did a few rounds and it was a zero. I could think about the entire thing and I have no stress, you know, like in a very detached way, like acknowledge that I learned some lessons um, whenever we were going to part ways and I had no emotional reactivity around it. And I remember thinking to myself, like, it's obviously a placebo and I'm crazy. <laughs> And then everyone around the room is getting results and I'm like, everyone in this room is crazy. <laughs> and like, we're crazy, we're all nuts, you know? And the crazy part is like, it really worked. So I leave the session being like completely blown away. Everything that I've ever thought is like completely, you know, my mind is blown, right? And. I started tapping. I started tapping on everything, you know, everything around me, my depression, my anxiety, my PTSD, and I saw tremendous relief. Um, and then the, the fun thing is when you start hanging out with middle-aged women who wear Birkenstocks, is it's like a slippery slope or a rabbit hole or whatever you want to call it, because soon I was discovering other modalities, right? So after EFT came EMDR and havening and um, what else? Um, faster EFT, which is like a derivative of EFT, so like, like there's so many modalities that are out there that help you get like that trigger and that emotional reactivity out, you know, of a situation or a memory or a feeling, um, help you, you know, downregulate the amygdala. It's so powerful. Um, and as I kept learning these techniques, I mean, that was it. Like within a few months, my depression, anxiety, and PTSD had, had resolved for life. I haven't had any symptoms in about, in almost 20 years. Um, but I kept learning these different techniques because I was down the rabbit hole, man. Um, I ended up with what I use in my practice. So I'm gonna show you, cause it's pretty cool. So this is a pyramid, <clears throat> what I call the pyramid of resilience. It's what I use in my practice and not to be boring, but this is what changed my life. And this is what I think changes the life of my clients, which is this, okay? Number one, the first level I had was um, tools to deal with outside stress. So if something was bothering me, you know, if I'd seen something traumatic, experienced something traumatic, right? Having a set of tools that depending on my mood, I could pull out and use to get myself out of fight or flight and feel calm again. So that was like the, the level one. That was what I absolutely needed to do first. After I could do that, I started learning tools to deal with like my mind. 
and my mind chatter. Like if you've heard of the work of Byron Katie, right? This idea that your beliefs that you have don't actually have to be true, right? Like I had the belief when we made this international move, like that moving is stressful. Once I jettisoned the belief that moving has to be stressful, like it was amazing how much less stress I felt. Um, we have all sorts of beliefs. I'm not good enough. I'll never do this well. She shouldn't have said that, right? Getting a sense of what we're thinking, right? I have to cough again. <coughs> we just moved, and they say with a move comes new germs, and it's totally true. Um, <coughs> so I'm going to have some tea. So, um, okay. <coughs> so, yeah, this idea that you know, we can control our mind too. We can understand what our thoughts are and, you know, delete beliefs that don't work for us and install more, install better ones, right? That was level two. So level one, and I have a whole video where I go through these points, but level one is, you know, I can deal with outside stress. That's the top. Once you've got that, <clears throat> level two is I can deal with inside stress. I can deal with my mind chatter. And those are tools like Byron Katie's The Work, if you've heard of the three principles, and other kind of stuff. Um, there's some more woo-woo techniques that we use in kinesiology to delete and install beliefs. Then once you've got that, once you can quiet what's outside, and once I could quiet what was inside, right? That is when I ended up being led to and adopting a, like a level three, which is a sustainable grounding um, routine, right? As an aside, that, so that's like meditation, journaling, mindfulness, that kind of thing that just sustains you every day. So you're generally in a state of calm. As an aside, I would tell you, we do this, in my opinion, totally wrong, right? Mindfulness is kind of sexy right now. We're trying to bring it into the schools, trying to bring it to kids. This is wonderful. I find a lot of times they're so dysregulated. They're in fight or flight. Their mind is full of chatter. If we don't first teach them the tools to deal with the outside, crap and the inside crap um then they try meditation and they can't focus on their breathing for like 10 minutes like then they end up you know deciding okay it's not going to work for me and they give it up when if we would just have taught it in the right order they come to it very naturally and they really embrace it as a um as a tool and that's what happened for me so those are the tools that i over time you know grew grew to learn and they have completely completely changed my life um, and that's what I use in my practice. So, and as in, in full transparency, I do talk a lot about the research and there's so much research behind mindfulness, meditation, EFT tapping, another one of my favorites, which is TAT, tap as acupressure technique. Hey, a lot of this has a lot of research. A lot of it doesn't, you know? And you know, when I found tapping 20 years ago, that was fringe then. You know, it took about 15, 18 years to come into the mainstream and become an evidence-based practice. and in the meantime, we've had new new modalities that have come up that are powerful and elegant and sometimes even more powerful and elegant than EFT. And not only do I hang out with middle-aged women in Birkenstocks, I have become I have become a middle-aged woman in colorful scarves and Birkenstocks. And so we're also on to the next thing. So there are a lot of modalities that have not been well researched yet, but will be. And then 20 years ago, you'll hear about them. But we practice I practice those in my practice. I practice those in my practice as well. So if you have any questions, you know, and if any of these tools have helped you in your life, I would love, love, love to hear about it. And if you have any questions about how I use them in my practice, please let me know. I also have a lot of free videos on my page if you want to learn more about any of these techniques. Um, yeah, and I look forward to hearing from you. Thanks for watching. Bye.